Hi, I'm Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a really pretty piece of home decor that you can make as a gift for someone or for yourself. Uh, this is a pretty rainbow flowers, and it's got the lyrics to Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I painted this in honor of National Infertility Awareness Week from Resolve.org, and they are the advocates for people who are experiencing infertility and loss. And I, uh, this is very personal for me because both of my kids, Hunter and Lily, were both conceived thanks to IVF, and we suffered for three years with infertility and loss before we were able to have them. So Infertility Awareness Week is really important for me, and it just ended this past week. I was a little bit late on getting some art done because I was very busy with my kids and grateful to have them in my life. So if you know someone who has suffered a loss or has gone through infertility themselves, this would be a really great gift to give to them uh, or a baby shower gift. I uh, probably will be hanging this up in my house because like I said, it's really important to me and rainbows are really special to me because of that. A lot of people uh, call their babies that are born after infertility and loss their rainbow babies. Um, that's something that I've seen a lot online and a lot of people really connect with that. So I hope you enjoy painting this or just learning how to paint some flowers and making a really pretty uh, piece of art. Thanks for painting with me. All right, so I'm gonna start out my piece by, uh, a little straighter, sorry. I'm going to start out my piece uh, laying out my paper so that I have a nice little arch for my rainbow. I have a ruler here, um, a dark sheet of paper so you can see the markings on it. I have a ruler that I got from a local scrapbook store that's got the measurements going 1 through 12 but then also goes into the center with the zero so it makes it really easy for me to find the center of my ruler. I am going to mark the center. I'm going to come down, eyeball about an inch or so. I'm just going to mark where the center is. And then I want my arch to just be very light. I'm just going to go by this width of the ruler, which is about two inches. And I want to end it about an inch in. So I'm going to mark that. And then I'm just going to very lightly draw a curved line. Just enough that I can see it but not dark enough that it'll show, the pencil will show. Okay, so you probably can't see that on the film, on the camera, but um, it goes up like this. And I'm gonna follow my flowers, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So I can kind of know that this is my center. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So I kind of want the blue to end up in the middle the paper that I'm using today is a 9 by 12 size Nujabi handmade paper that I purchased from Jerry's Artorama. It is actually 200 pound paper, so it's pretty thick and it's got a nice handmade edge because it's individually hand pressed. It's really uh, got a lot of texture to it that will really give you different uh, different look on each of your each of your paintings because of the way that the fibers absorb the paint. And it looks really cool. I like this paper quite a bit. All right, well, I guess I will just start on some of my flowers while my words are printing. All right, so I want to start with some red flowers on this side. And I'm going to use, I got some permanent red deep. I think I'll kind of just stick with like the primary colors. And then I can kind of do some variations with some other colors as I go. All right, I think I'm going to start doing a little rose. So. Do some thin lines that kind of overlap each other. And I'm using a Princeton brush velvet touch round size four. All right, so I have my lines. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then with that water, not too much, just kind of dab it off on your brush. Oh, I got a little too much there. <laughs> just kind of spread that around to get my rose. Red, orange, yellow, green. Okay, I might do got like a Mayan orange here that's kind of like a red orange. Just kind of transition to that. And I'll do kind of like a poppy type color of flower, maybe. Let's see. 
I'll use some sap green. Just do some little leaves along the way as well. And then to make a vein detail, what I like to do is to flip my brush on and use my handle to just kind of press into the paper. And then while the paint is still wet, uh, the paint will settle down into that little grooved line that you've made with the end of your brush. And then for the center of that poppy, I'm going to take, I have a little indigo on my palette here. I'm just going to drop in and let that kind of bleed in there for like a little poppy. I'm going to take some, I've got some light yellow, I'm going to mix that into that mine orange just to get myself a little lighter orange color. Um, I'll just do like a simple five petaled flower here. I'm just kind of making these up as I go. I don't really have any specific plan on how I want the flowers here. Just touched my orange. Okay. I am going to make a point to not do my leaves until I get the rest of my flowers done for the rest of this here. I'll dry that back over my orange there. All right, you can already tell with this orange flower in particular here. You can see the little fibers, and it's giving you that really neat texture that you can really kind of play up. I am moved to like a deep yellow. I've got some hands of yellow deep here. Or like new gamboge. Any kind of yellow deep you've got would be good. Just use whatever color palette you have and you can kind of mix to get your shades as you go across. Alright, so I've got this darker yellow. Let's see. I want to do maybe like a big type of like a lily. Flower. Do some big points here. Do that green there a little bit. Whoops. I'll go back over that with some more details later. Just get some nice pointed petals. Biggest mistake in watercolor is not waiting for things to dry. Alright, so to fix that mistake, if you have that bleeding, what I did is I just used my paper towel to dab up any extra, and then if you need to remove even more, you can use a damp brush to pick extra paint up. Okay, here, like this. So, remove that, wipe it on your towel. And then if you need to, you can dab that back up and then go right back over it after it's drier and just avoided that green. Okay, so usually fix it unless you have a very, very staining color, then it's not going to be as easy to fix, but it is fixable. I'm going to move into some lighter yellow now. I'm going to do another little five petal flower. Then I want to do like a yellowy green. So I'm going to mix like a little lime type color. Just mix sap green in with my light yellow. Now make like Zinnia type flower. That did not turn out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> okay, it's just kind of like a blobby flower. We're going to go back over that one. I can fix it. And I'm going to move 
to I have an ultramarine. I'm just kind of maybe do like some more imaginary type flowers here. We'll just kind of. Mm. Like almost like a peony, but they don't obviously come in blue. But I can just do some strokes up and then I'll add some maybe little stamen colors in there. Let's see here. I'm gonna go into like a phthalo blue. Do like another rose type flower. I'll do that. Remember, I'm going to just do those outline shapes, and then I get clean water in my brush, but not too much water, and I can just spread that around. Transitioning into an indigo. I'll do a similar flower to this one. actually have, um, in my Daniel Smithies, I have a color called Moon Glow that kind of reminds me of an indigo mixed with a violet. So I'm going to get some of that color out here to transition to before I move to the actual violet. I think I'll do like a smaller five petaled flower here. Carpus Old Violet that I will do, and I think I'll end on another rose. I'm just going around and crossing over, just kind of covering up your intersections here and going around and getting clean water on the brush. Now that should be dry enough that I won't have too much bleeding. Okay, so I'm gonna add some details on my centers here. Maybe go back over my rows another time just to add another layer. Some very thin lines following the direction of the petals I made. And getting some green. Go back over those leaves one more time. Couple little stem pieces in there. Some other little leaf shapes. I'm pretty much just sticking to the same leaf shape as I go across here. And 
just kind of fill in wherever you feel like needs a little bit more. Okay, so let's see how I had some phthalo blue is what I did that with. So I'll go back over, just add a little more in there. That was my ultramarine blue. on there. Make some little, that'll be that center little steaming coming up. All right, so this flower that I wasn't happy with, I don't know what I did there. I had that sap green mixed with that yellow light. So go back over it and make some long petals, make it look more like a crazy daisy. And then in the center of it, I'll take some of this phthalo blue. There, that looks cool. Alright, so I've got this yellow one. I'm going to take the deeper yellow I've got, do the center for that. And like a little buttercup. Uh, this one, I'm going to take, I think, a darker orange or the, actually I'll do the red. and bright orange. This orange one, that was that Mayan orange mixed with the uh, yellow. Just gonna go back over that again. Okay, I'll move back over here. I'll come back to that so I can do the center after that dries some more. Then I got this one that had the indigo. Do some more dots in the center just to give it a center. Just do a few lines coming out to just to define those petals. Okay, so this is that one that I had that was like the indigo and violet, the moon glow. Just make some dots in the center, and then kind of like what I just did with that yellow one. Just gonna go up around the edges, make some little lines coming out from the center. And then I need to go back over another layer with the violet on this one. Just add some little curved strokes in there. All right, I'm just going to give that one quick dry really quick. All right, that's not all the way dry over here, but at least this one is. Now I'm looking at this, I kind of wish they would have done the phthalo blue before that ultramarine because I feel like this has got that more of that green blue color and I should have swapped those. But it's all just a personal preference. It doesn't really matter that badly. Um, what I think I'd like to do now in the middle of that is just take that deep red and just make a few little dots just to give that a center. Maybe do those little lines like I had been on the other ones that are similar. Good. Okay. Now, next step I want to do is add some paint splatter just to kind of bring those colors all together. So I'm just going to go around to the colors I did and just add the colors as they went across. So if you want bigger splatters, you want more water on your brush, smaller splatters, smaller brush, less water. Just kind of following my colors across. I actually, I'll go back across. I want to do some along the bottom too, so that my um, my words will have the colors behind it too. I'm 
I'm gonna let that all dry. And then I can transfer over my little somewhere over the rainbow saying and get that put on. All right, now that that is dry, I am going to do my little trick because my brush lettering freehanded is not that great. I print it off in a font that I like for my computer. And this is called Bromello and it's size 54. And I just did the, for the lyrics from the Somewhere Over the Rainbow song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Skies Are Blue and the Dreams That You Dare to Dream Really Do Come True. So I'm gonna use this as my guide I've got a light pad so that I can transfer this over. And since this paper is so thick, you're going to want this really bright. And uh, I might need to even go over to my window to see this a little better. But um, I'm going to transfer this over and then I'll be right back. Uh, you won't be able to really see it. I'm going to do it very faintly in pencil. And then I'm going to do my paint um, in the indigo color over the top. So I think you can see that I actually transferred it over fairly dark because this paper is kind of hard to do very lightly and see because of the texture, but since I'm gonna be going over it in a deep indigo color, um, I'm not too worried about seeing the pencil through. And if I do end up with any extra after it's dry, I can use um, a kneaded eraser and pick up any extra pencil with that. I'm gonna use a round size one Princeton Velvet Touch brush and I'm going to use my indigo. If you were gonna be doing a lighter color on this, I would maybe suggest using a watercolor pencil that's in the color of the paint that you wanted to do or if you're just going to use a marker um, you can probably just use your marker and transfer directly over if you have a light pad or you taped it to your window to do your design but since i am just doing watercolor with the brush i am just going to go over this and if you don't mind terribly i'm just going to speed up my video while i concentrate on painting this and uh, you'll be able to just pause that and Finish your lettering up, that is the last step of this piece.
All right, after I finish this lettering, I feel like I need a little bit more. I'm gonna add some more splatters to this before I call it done. Right, there is the finished little rainbow piece. I think this would look really, really good in a nursery. Um, anybody that just happens to like rainbows, it's a really pretty piece, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think I'll be listing this up in my Etsy shop. So, um, thanks for painting along with me.